so guys see I did say I'd be back in I? Ho, ho. anyway um, it seems and I've looked into this that Saturn is losing its rings um, and I think I feel that this is very meaningful because Saturn is this is how I interpret it and let's never forget people that everything is down to interpretation so it's subjective rather than objective so never this is not a reason never to to follow anybody uh, any gurus or any scientists or experts because it's all down to interpretation at the end of the day and utterly subjective but subjectively I interpret this to be meaningful to the extent that I see Saturn which is the ruler of Capricorn the devil in the tarot card. Um, see, all Capricorns are truly evil. I am evil. Don't tell anyone. No, not really, but uh, Capricorn, or rather Saturn, is the structures of this world. To me, anyway. Um, it's old father time, it's limitation, it's the hard task master. It teaches us very valuable lessons. For example, the, the lesson of the, um, the, what was it, the tortoise and the hare, that to me is always like a Saturn type story. The tortoise wins the race, Whereas the hair doesn't, and the hair is very airy. It's like oh, I want the shit now, and I want it now, here, now. Um, and the tortoise is groaningly slow, and it's only with great determination, with great patience, which in and of itself, if you haven't got a patient nature, you have to learn to be patient. You have to learn to endure your impetuosity in 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 the mix. In the end you get there, you get there, through sheer force of will and focus. Capricorn is very good at that, I'm very good at that, even though I have my moon in Aries, which is in there going, no, 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 I want it now, 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 now. <gasps> so you can imagine. <sighs> anyway, um, getting back to Saturn, Saturn is losing his rings. Now this year, we have Saturn and Pluto and Jupiter and we have Chiron in Aries. Chiron in Aries is all about I am. It's all about, well, the forces of darkness have spun, have spun this the wool over our eyes, you know, this delusion, illusion that oh, we own all of this, it's all ours and you have to prove that you deserve to exist by doing what we want you to do and work in that office and prop up the system for which we will pay you a meager salary. You have to prove that you deserve to exist. But Aries, Chiron in Aries says, fuck that shit. You've been fucking lying to us and we can see that we are, I am. Look at me, how powerful I am without ego. It's saying, look, I am. I am powerful. I am a creator being and you're full of shit. So, poof. Right? Um, that is a very big feeling now. The whole I am, I am, right? The true self, the sentinel standing there in all its glory saying those two words. I am. And not just saying the words, but knowing it feeling it, knowing this to be the ultimate truth. I am. We are gods. Oh, surely the wrath of the Creator will rain down upon us now. But it's the Christ within, that's what Star Gods always says, and I believe this to be true to an extent. We are gods, but if we are gods whose ego has not been tempered then we will become the devil and so we've been going through this process here haven't we we've been going through it often on our knees in the darkness suffering we have been suffering from saturn we've been suffering from pluto the lord of the underworld because that is the only way in which we can become the true self, 
the God, the Christ within, call it what you will really, because there has to be great wisdom, great compassion, you see, and that's why we walk this path, is, is what I feel. So, something is happening, the true self is growing stronger, and Saturn and Pluto are pumping up the volume as an evil out there saying no we're not fucking going anywhere no, we're not having it we are all powerful ouch ouch don't hurt me don't hurt me don't hurt me i'm all powerful i'm all powerful i'm all powerful don't hurt me a bit like that um and saturn is losing its rings now those rings are a symbol of its power and guess what it's doing saturn is eating its own rings its gravitational pull is drawing in those rings. It's a bit like yesterday where I was going on about the snake eating its own tail because that is in essence what Saturn is doing. It's eating its own tail people, which is very good, very good indeed. Yum, yum, yum. It means that, yes, it, it, things are changing. You know, things are going to gain momentum, I feel, you know, and um, well, I am, we are, and we are growing bolder. We will discover more and more about what that means. What does that mean? I am. What does that really mean? Let's find out. Let's experience that. Because you can know it up here, but that's not really knowing. Knowing is experiencing it, embodying it. You know? Because we have been ruled by gods who are not tempered with compassion and wisdom. They were the usurpers, the false gods, you see. And in a crazy roundabout way, they only existed because we let them, because we believed all the delusions that we were small and powerless and worthless, you see. We believed all of that. We came in here, into this virtual reality, knowing full well what we would encounter. This is the quest to be the ultimate, become the ultimate creator being. To become a god. So there's a lot of people, for example, <laughs> this because this world power, you know, it loves power. People love power, or what they perceive power to be, rather. And it's like, well, I'm a master number, you know. I'm a number 11, or I'm a number 33, so see, I'm really special. Well, actually, no. No, it isn't. See? Yes, so you're an 11, or you're a 33, so are you prepared to do what it takes to earn that? Because people born under auspicious omens are not anything special by default. No. They have to earn it. And it's not saying, well, you're worthless and you have to prove that you deserve to exist. That's only on the flip side of that. That's what the dark side has done with that concept. But to earn it means to take something that, okay, you were born under an auspicious omen, which means that you're a very special person, or rather that you could be, should you choose to take the quest. If you choose to undertake the quest to become this special being, then you will have to work for it. The ring doesn't throw itself in the fire of Mount Doom. They had to go through the lands of Mordor into Mount Doom to drop a set ring and column into the chasm of fire. And that is what it's all about. Power has to be tempered with love and compassion because otherwise it becomes something dark. 
we know this because look at the world. Um, but things are shifting, I can feel it, I can feel it. And hey, maybe I'm completely wrong, but <laughs> I mean, you know, because I'm not, I, you know, I feel things and, but of course, as, as we all know, we, we have our ups and we have our downs and um, everything is, is, is quite intense. And I have many ups and downs on the internal plane. But what I'm figuring out here <clears throat> is that in every moment of the day I have a choice with which to align myself. And there are forces within me, there are forces within all of us that with awareness we can see and we can choose to align ourselves with. Now there is victimhood, powerlessness, self-punishment, this is what is happening to me and there's nothing I can do and I hate myself and everything is shit and I'm worthless and that's where I'm going to be. Or I am a powerful creator being and there's a reason why I've gone through all of these harrowing experiences and I see those who have done this to me however and I hate them but actually I can by the by let it go and instead of hating myself and believing all that to be true I can now move into the light and love myself and nourish myself and feed myself for I am powerful I am a god and I understand why I've been through all that shit now. It's because I had to temper my power with compassion, wisdom and love. Because that is what true power is. It does not need to control, it does not need to manipulate. It is not afraid, it has no lack of confidence, it doesn't feel worthless. It knows it is all there is. But it, its fuel is infinite unconditional love and creativity and that is its magic. We have to go into the dark to know the light it seems and that makes sense to me. It really does, it makes a great deal of sense to me. And so <clears throat> one of my subscribers said can you talk about forgiveness? Well I guess this is my spiel, my the way I see forgiveness. Don't force it on yourself. When you're not ready to forgive, you're not ready to forgive, so don't forgive. Hate them. Go for it. Feel the hate and feel the rage and feel the victimhood. You have to feel it. You have to acknowledge it. You have to be there with it. Because it is your experience. They did do it to you. It did happen. You are, we are very traumatized. We are very fucked up. We do live in a world where every day we are witnesses to the atrocities that have been committed and perpetrated against us and our fellow souls. All that has to be seen. All that has to be spoken out loud. It has to be called by its name. It has to be acknowledged. It has to be felt. It has to be processed. It has to be alchemized. But the, the hardest part of it all, ultimately, you will find, is not to forgive anything or anyone on the external planes. The hardest part about forgiveness is to forgive yourself ultimately. <laughs> you see, because what always, it always comes back to here, in here. You see, that's, that's where it's at, people. And it's very difficult to put that into words. And there's a lot of people who still see who are very polarized, they believe that whole polarization bollocks is out there and they're doing it to us and we are the eternal victim and it's very addictive and it's only when you get to a certain level that you are able by the by to let that go because there's a mechanism there that says that if you let it go you're giving evil carte blanche to do anything to you it's as if oh you're resigning yourself to being victimized no you're not You, you simply opt out of being a victim. You see, because everything that happens to us in life can be utilized for our ultimate empowerment. We can learn from it a great deal. The dark side wants us to remain in the victimhood state. 
It wants us to remain in that rage, in that self, clawing at ourselves, that negativity. It is hell consciousness, you see. It's our choice to linger there. But actually for a long time we linger there because we don't realize that we have a choice. And because it is very addictive, it's very sticky. But by the by we learn to, aha, I do have a choice and I don't have to stay there. Pluto shall not be my master. Pluto is that hell consciousness, that mass consciousness. Pluto is lord of the underworld. You see, but the door is always open. You can open, you can walk right through it and out of hell and into the light. Yes, even whilst shit is still going down, it is possible to do this, but you have to be ready. You won't be able to do it until you are ready. And so we must walk the path and we must go into the maze and we must face our demons. Layer after layer after layer after layer. This is a great big cosmic journey, people. This is a quest. This is very, very big. And those of us who are walking this path are incredible souls. Even when you find yourself on your knees begging for mercy, thinking that evil's won and there's nothing you can do. And all is lost forever and ever. You still keep going which tells you something about yourself. Um, the dark side is disintegrating people, which is why it's putting up such a fight. But it's eating its own tail. Saturn is eating its own rings. And it's acceler ex accelerating, apparently. It's happening more and more, and the rings are dis disappearing at a faster rate than ever before. All of this is very meaningful, you know. Jupiter, I think, will be our guiding principle and Chiron in Aries also will be our guiding principle. They're very similar, they're all about expansion. Because we have lived such a narrow, this is all there is, and oh boy, it's, it's all been such a terror, and lie, 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 lie. And the joy that we will feel as we begin to discover the nature of truth and our true self. Yes. But I dare say for some people this will be the year where the going will get a little tougher, maybe, possibly on account of, you know, it's it's all about the dark night of the soul when you really begin to heal for real and it will feel like shit and it will feel like you're being ripped apart but actually it's all for healing purposes and when you go in through that stuff don't worry about forgiveness take that as a concept and just put it somewhere over there and leave it until you're ready to get back to it and look at it there's far too much going on. We're so traumatized, and we have been so victimized, that to go to somebody and say, well, you should forgive, you know, it's a spiritual thing to do, is fucking, it's actually abusive. It's abuse. To go to me and say, well, you should have gratitude and be happy, and you should forgive. That's just gaslighting nonsense, frankly. First, we have to deal with the fallout of it all, which is massive trauma that we've incurred. We have to heal and heal and heal and we have to hate and we have to rage and we have to scream and we have to and we have to do all of that. We have to go into the insane asylum that lies within our own psyche, within our own soul and liberate ourselves. Soul retrieval is what the shaman call it. You know, we have to do that. Forgiveness will come knocking on our door when we are ready to receive it and be patient with ourselves. Yes, forgiveness is important, but it's not actually so much about forgiveness. Forgiveness implies things that, yeah, concepts that, yeah. It's, it's really more about the realization that you are powerful and valuable and that mundane reality is a fucking lie. That we are magical creator beings. That we are gods. It's about healing, yeah. And it happens as long as we are willing, as long as we daily set an intention that regardless, I want to heal. 
Yes, I can't see the wood through the trees. I'm, I'm really confused. I'm in a great deal of pain. I don't know what's going on. Ooh, I mean, believe me, people, I know. <laughs> and as long as you're willing to put one foot in front of the other and keep going and keep learning and keep healing, you will find that grace will walk beside you and show you the way. This is your true self and the Great Mother with this energy that permeates everything and that walks by your side and shows you the way. And then you go through the layers, through the maze. And whilst you're doing that, Saturn is eating its rings and your mom's gear is eating its own tail and the system will disintegrate and powers that have ruled this world will begin to disintegrate and everything will change. Your internal changes will give rise to external changes for we are powerful creator warriors and I believe this with all my heart. We are gods. But our power lies in love. And so we have to learn that. We have to go into the dark to heal and then to emerge into the light and realize what we truly are. Oh, I have a bad hair day. Anyway, <clears throat> that's just me rambling on this morning, but you know, forgiveness people, never mind about forgiveness, all right? Never mind about it at all. When you're ready, you'll realize that forgiveness is a concept, it's a word, you know, and it means different things to different people at different times. Ultimately, it's about freedom. Ultimately, it's about realizing that we are not small, valueless, worthless, powerless, little, wizened creatures lurking in the shadows, perpetually suffering and being victimized. That is all a lie. That is not true. But we chose to come in to experience all of that and to work through that, rediscovering slowly through the darkness our truly unique divine nature. And somebody has to provide the darkness, somebody has to set the stage, somebody has to be the perpetrator and the evil one, right? It's not real, it's a virtual reality, so there's nothing to forgive. Yes, they're evil, they've done it all to us, and look what they're doing to the world, all of that is true. I freely admit that. But you get to a point where a lot of the hate and the rage has left your system, perhaps, and you're ready to be freer. Forgiveness is, is, is that point where you're able to let it go. And I'm not quite there myself yet, but I'm beginning to feel it a little bit, you know? Hmm, that's all I can say about that. It's about understanding, finally, with great clarity, what this is, who we are, why we're here, realizing our destiny and fulfilling it in this great quest. And something is afoot, and it will all work out one way or another. Okay, I think I'll call it a day there, because I'm just going to ramble on and on and on. I'll still be set here at midnight going, oh, and you'll all be there going. Right, so, to loo people. <laughs>